Okay, today we're going to go over all things essay writing. Uh, as we announced last week uh, on Wednesday, you do have an essay that's going to be due before tonight. So it's an LEQ essay. Same type of essay that, that we wrote at the beginning of the year. Just, just a few tweaks that we need to go over. Uh, we're going to start off by going over all these new resources I added on the Canvas. That I think will just kind of help you in general in the course. Uh, then we're just going to kind of break down the essay again step by step. We'll look at the College Board rubric. We'll look at the rubric I used to actually grade you off of. Uh, we'll look at maybe a sample essay or two. Uh, just kind of go over the ins and outs of how to be successful on this essay. One of the big things to remember, these essays, guys, it's, it's not an English class essay. All right. It is very formulaic in here. You got to follow that. If you're not giving them, or giving me in this case, what the rubric's asking for, you're not going to do well. That being said, once you kind of see exactly what they want, it's not nearly as bad as you think it is. So pay attention today, jot down a few notes. I would have your notebooks out because there's a few little tips I'm going to give you. Uh, but by and large, this is kind of a, a kickback and pay attention and, and figure out these essays. And then after I'm done, you know, throughout the little presentation, if you got questions, write them down. And then at the end, hopefully we can answer some of those things. A uh, couple news and notes, though, before we get started. Last week, we did AP exam registration on Friday. I think the majority of you guys finished. A few of you may not have. It's not that big of a deal, uh, but you do need to get that done. Even if you're not going to take the AP exam, you need to go through all the steps. Because at the very least, we've got to get you in the college board system because uh, some of the quizzes and stuff that we're going to take in the, in the near future, you do have to be logged in through that. Um, originally today, I was going to start off by finishing up like the Renaissance and stuff like that, you know, because because we pretty much finished development in Europe. So there's a little bit more I wanted to do. Uh, that being said, I don't think that we're going to have time to do it, which which does sadden me. The good news is last Friday for my first period, I actually did finish it and I did tape that. So I would recommend maybe watching that video when you get a chance. Uh, there's there's some good information in there. You don't have to watch the whole thing. I'm really only going over the Renaissance and a little bit on the Crusades, like the first 10 minutes. Uh, so you get a chance. You want more of a complete uh, look at development of your uh, developments uh, in Europe during this time period. That's definitely something to take a gander at. Uh, but anyway, AP exam, you know, if you did get registered and you are going to take it, uh, you do got to pay some money. It's $90 per exam. Uh, you owe a $44 deposit if you're going to get this thing. And this is how we decide who's getting a test and who's not. You need to pay that by uh, the 30th, by Friday the 30th, uh, day before Halloween. Uh, so there's that. Other news and notes. Uh, last Friday, notebook check number one was due. Uh, turned it in great. I'm going to start grading those probably a little bit today and throughout the next couple of days. Uh, if you have not turned it in yet, please get in as soon as possible. Uh, if you can get to me before midnight today, it's only one day off. You can still get an 80. After that, though, you know, you are looking at a failing grade, and you don't want that. Uh, remember, the, the notebook check is a daily grade on its own. It also averages into your final test grade. Uh, other things that we kind of introduced last week uh, for grades this week. Uh, first, the aforementioned essay. Unit 1, Global Tapestry LEQ essay. We're going over it today. Uh, that assignment will be under today's date. It is going to open up probably a little bit later this afternoon. I'm waiting so I can put up the recorded version of the video. That way people got more of an explanation. Uh, but it is going to open up. You will have until Wednesday at midnight to get it done. It is a test grade. If you don't turn it in Wednesday by midnight, it's going to be late like everything else. So get it done. Get it done early. Uh, if you have a chance tonight or tomorrow, go ahead and do that. Um, on Wednesday, we're doing PSAT testing. I'm actually going to be out uh, administering that. How many of you guys are taking the PSAT? Okay, in some classes, it's almost everybody. Um, so I don't plan on us doing anything new that day. It's kind of a catch up day. If you want to work on it in class, you can. That's fine. Uh, but I'm not going to make that mandatory because, again, you know, not everybody's going to be here. Uh, plus, I'm giving you a full hour to write this essay. It is time. Um, and if you do it in a class period, we don't have quite a full hour, so I don't want to I don't want to kind of handcuff you as far as that's concerned. Uh, I think at the end of the day, you'll feel more comfortable with this essay than you do right now, but it is a test grade. It's our first one. Please get in. Please get in on time. The last thing that we went over on Friday and it, it kind of went hand in hand with exam registration. 
Uh, we've got a quiz that you need to complete over Unit 1, the Global Tapestry, by Friday at 11.45 p.m. That's the latest I can make. Um, to get into this quiz, you got to be, well, first you got to have a College Board account, which we went over. You also got to be enrolled in my AP classroom. Once you're in there, it's pretty easy. It's already been assigned to the whole class or all my classes. Uh, you go in, it's a 15 question multiple choice quiz. Uh, you've got a 20 minute time limit. Here's the good news though, especially if you weren't here, you know, you need to know this. If you just simply complete it, just get in there and take the stinking quiz because the website is kind of finicky. It'll, it'll kick you out every once in a while, it'll crash. It is what it is. Uh, but in light of that, if you just do the quiz, I'm going to give you 100 for it. It's kind of a, a participation grade. That being said, because I do want you to take it seriously, I do want you to read it carefully and actually put forth some effort. Um, every question you get right out of those 15, I'm going to add one point to your lowest test grade. So you could get 15 bonus points that could be added on to, to this essay on Wednesday. Maybe the test we're going to do, we probably got a test coming up uh, next week. I mean, it, that's very valuable. So take it seriously. The next quiz, I don't know if I'll do it the exact same way. I might, who knows. Uh, definitely get in there, get it done because it's too valuable to really kind of pass up. And it is for a great also. Uh, so those are the things that went on. Let's talk about today. Let's talk about essay type stuff. Uh, if you are not already in Canvas, please get in there, follow along with me. It's going to make a lot more sense if you can click on the same stuff that I'm clicking. And let's just go to the top of the page. Uh, you don't have to be under this week yet, because uh, before we do LEQ stuff, there's some resources I will show you. So top of the page, uh, the, the course introduction, start here page. First, you got Teams meetings. If you are ever at home, you got to miss a day or something like that, or, you know, obviously for the virtual people, they can attend. You can attend class live. You just got to click on that uh, period's Teams meetings. Every once in a while, I won't run Teams like if uh, like the day we we're outside because Wi-Fi was terrible. Or if it's a day where they're just watching videos, well, there's not really a need for that. Uh, but especially if we're doing lectures or something like that, which you know it's history class, we do a decent amount of. Uh, you can log in. You can follow along live. That way, if you have any questions in class, you can ask them right then. Again, it's not mandatory, but you know, it's not a bad idea. Uh, beneath that, you do have the Ansco textbook. This is the primary textbook that we use. It's, it's pretty short, it's pretty sweet, but it gives you just what you need to know. The units, except for the last unit, are already loaded up there. Now this, you, you're probably never gonna need to reference because when I give you assigned readings, I put it under that day. But if you just want to get ahead or I don't know, you're bored and want to read some history, uh, it is up here. You can check that stuff out. This stuff, though, is new. I just added all this this morning. I've been kind of collecting some stuff for a while. Each one of these in their own way, I think, is very valuable, uh, not only for just getting ready for quizzes and tests and essays and stuff in this class, but also at the end of the year, a lot of this is going to be very valuable for getting you ready for that AP test that I do sincerely hope all of you guys take. Uh, first one, AP exam score calculator. Go ahead and click on it. Make sure it works. Maybe it works for me and not for you. And I need to know that stuff. Um, if you scroll down, and, and there's there's all sorts of good information here. This Albert site's actually pretty good for test prep. Uh, but this is what I want. It's right here at the end. It is the score calculator. Guys, our AP test is broken up into four very broad parts. OK, you've got your multiple choice questions, 55 questions, 55 minutes. You then have your short answer questions. They're going to give you four sets of short answer questions. You choose out of three of them uh, and you can get, I guess, three points per set. They're usually three questions. Uh, you take a little break, then you come back. You write your DBQ essay, which we're going to get into eh, probably at the very beginning of next six weeks. Uh, and then you've got your long essay question, what we're going to do an example of uh, on Wednesday. Again, it, it's one of those things by the end of the year, you're not going to be good at every single thing. Maybe you will be, but maybe you won't be, but it's OK. You just collect points as you go. So let's just, you know, let's say let's say you rock out the multiple choice. Let's say you get I don't know, 37 out of 55 correct. 
And let's say the SAQ, eh, you do okay on that first one. You get two of the points. You get like no of the points on the second one. Maybe you get a one on the third one. Uh, but then the DBQ, the TBQ, which sounds real intimidating, but once you learn how to do it, it's pretty easy. Let's say you get six out of the seven. And the LEQ, I don't know, maybe you struggle because LEQ, you kind of either know it or you don't. You get two. That's a three. And that's a passive score on your AP exam. But then you can mess with it. Hey, what if I got a seven on that four or on the DBQ? Oh, wow, now I'm at a four. Again, it just kind of helps when you're getting ready to kind of visualize what all exactly you need to do to be prepared to get credit for this test. Because uh, like I said, so slowly that it just kicked me out entirely. And it kicked out my team's meeting maybe no you're still there okay the next thing that we're going to look at is college board website and this is good just having your favorites these are the people that that run the ap exams they also run sat they're the people you made the account with if you didn't already have one there it's through their website that you're in the ap classroom cool stuff here you'll have to look over it uh, all sorts of documents. This this document right here is like, uh, I forget how many hundreds of pages, but it tells you every single thing that we teach in this class, which is kind of good when we're getting ready for the test. Tells you about the exam, tells you about how you're scored, blah, blah, blah. Tells you kind of all of our units, your skills, stuff like that. I like this link, the exam. Especially if you want additional practice uh, on essay writing. Guys, they've got a bunch of the old released exam questions. Here they break down the parts of the exam. You can check that out when you get a chance. We're going to be looking at uh, some of the pre-response questions from 2019 because the ones that we did last year were, they were weird. Uh, but you can even go back further than that. I mean, they've got the questions, then they've got sample responses for everything. It's just kind of nice to be able to go in there and see what would actually get these points. Because if you can start to look at sample essays and say, oh, they got the thesis, but they didn't get the evidence, you can kind of figure out how to do that on your own. Uh, they've got the the most recent up here, but you can go back for, man, a while. You can go back like man, 10, 15 years. Lots of different writing prompts. Now, I will tell you, the last couple of years are the best resources because that's that's more aligned with how the test is now. But, man, you know, it's you can go back pretty much as far as you want and kind of see you know, how the test, how the essays have evolved and, you know, still see some pretty good examples of writing. So let's get out of that. Next link, I believe, is for AP Classroom, and that's where we're not going to go into it. But that's what you should have signed up for last week. That's where your quiz is going to be. Uh, from here, Heimler's History, AP World History, Unit Review Videos. That's the guy with the beard. He has review videos on every single unit that we do on even the little subunits like you know dar al Islam. we may have watched that one but he's going to have a video on there and they're short and they're sweet and especially as we get ready for tests especially as we get ready for the ap test this is a really good resource for you guys to utilize the college board the official people they have their own unit review videos but each little unit each little piece of unit is like 45 minutes so that's more in depth obviously that's more like you know one of my lectures you know that that we spend a very long time going through. But again, at the end of the year, maybe that's something you're interested in. Uh, if after the day you're like, I still don't know how to write these essays. Oh my God, they're so terrible. Handler's got a how to write these essays video, which, you know, may be helpful for you. Couple more. These, these other two are just kind of websites to go over the content. Uh, but like Freemanpedia, and he he's kind of lately, he doesn't always update his regularly as he should. But it's got our whole curriculum kind of broken down, you know, our different units. And then he's got links to all these different uh, areas within that, you know. Uh, he's got maps, a lot of visuals. I, I actually steal some of his visuals sometimes because they're pretty good. Uh, but, you know, trade networks and who's involved. And, and he's got links to a bunch of videos that help to review some of the content. Again, this is something that's just there for you. It's a resource, you know, so use it as you see fit. The other one is very similar. I actually like it better because it's more comprehensive. 
Problem is, it is over the old curriculum because I think the teacher that made this doesn't actually teach uh, this subject anymore. Uh, but it's OK, because the big thing about the old curriculum is it, it was just broader. You know, there was more time that was covered. So here, if you're going to the old curriculum, as long as you start in period three, don't necessarily worry about one and two. The dates may be shifted a little bit, but the same basic content. And you go in, they've got different key concepts. They go into a lot more depth. I mean, they're going to break down. You know, we're about to do networks of exchange and all these trade routes get more and more into them. They're going to give you some good stuff. And then much like Freeman PDA, they're going to have links to videos and, and other resources. Again, especially before tests in this class, you want to go on there and look over some of this stuff rather than having to look over all the exact same notes. I do think that's extremely helpful. Uh, but again, those are there. Know that they're there. There's there's some good resources out there. There's a bunch of stuff that I didn't post because I didn't want to completely overwhelm you. Uh, but all of these are, are good for the class and good for getting ready for the AP test. Now I want you to scroll down to today's date. We're going to go over a bunch of different documents. And towards the end of the day, I'll post the video that we're recording. Uh, but each one of these, I think, is going to help explain, you know, exactly what the LEQSA is, how to do well on it. Uh, maybe a little bit better than you understand right now. So let's first click on the official College Board AP History rubrics. And yeah, if you will click on the things that I'm clicking on, I think that it will help. Now, I would recommend having your notebook out. I'm not going to check this in the notebook check. So if you really are just dead set against writing anything, that's cool. That's on you. But I am going to give you some tips, just a, a, a few quick things to just jot down that I think could be advantageous for you when you actually sit down to write this essay. So the AP history rubric is not really a rubric for the SAQ, so that's not on here. Uh, but you've got your DBQ essay first, which is very similar to the LEQ. And then if you scroll down to about the third page, you got your LEQ stuff. Again, I, I went over this once before in a video, but you know, it was a video. I know not everybody watched it. Uh, and that's why we were in the remote setting. Now it's live. And if you got questions, just raise your hand. I'll try to answer them right there. There are six points you can get on an LEQ essay. I'll go over how that equates to a grade in your class here in just a second. Six points. This is what they want. The format, you know, multi paragraphs and introduction and conclusion, that's good. It's a good rule to follow, but this is all you're being scored on. So the first couple things I'd write down first, spelling and grammar, we don't care. Now you're typing this one, so spelling and grammar should be okay, but don't let that consume you. Don't go back and, you know, make sure you're looking up the, the exact spelling of Chinampa or anything like that. As long as I can tell what you're talking about, you're fine. Now I think. To form a cohesive argument, I would still, you know, do your multi paragraph model, but technically you don't even have to do that. It, it could just be a long stream of consciousness. Makes it harder to grade, though. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, you're getting graded on this and this alone. Spelling and grammar is not part of the rubric, so, you know, doesn't matter. Second thing, just like our, our SAQs, and this is all of our writing in this class, we look past your mistakes. You could have a whole paragraph over a bunch of crap that you just made up that has nothing to do with this. Well, if I had a physical copy, I'd just mark that out and I would read the rest and grade it based on that. It's okay if there's some errors in content knowledge. As long as there's enough accurate information, enough good stuff that fits in these uh, point categories, I can still give you points on that. So we look past your mistakes, spelling and grammar, they don't matter. Now, eventually, when we start doing these by hand, which I mean, that's technically how we should be doing them, but but it's just weird right now. Uh, you'll have to do it in pen and there's a couple other stipulations, but uh, we'll go over those later. For right now, let's just worry about the basics. So you got six points. You got four categories that you can get them in. The first two categories, thesis and context, maybe make a little note out of the side. Those ideally should be in your first paragraph, your introduction. Now, the thesis could show up at the very end in the conclusion, and it's not a bad habit to get it in both places. But for me, since that's kind of the foundation of your whole essay, it's what gives your essay direction. It's the first thing that we really look for. Uh, that's something that that I think it fits better in the introduction. 
you can either do it at the very beginning of the introduction or the end. I think stylistically it flows better if you do it at the end of the first introductory paragraph or the introductory paragraph. Uh, but again, I kind of leave that up to you. But it can't be buried somewhere in the middle of your essay. That That's not thesis anymore. Thesis statement. You're answering the question. You are responding to the prompt and you're basically previewing your argument, your line of reasoning. So our last LEQ was comparing different religions, you know, uh, the religions that we study from the religions chart. So let's say that, that you were writing about the similarities between uh, Hinduism and Buddhism. Something as simple as Hinduism and Buddhism are very similar in that they both believe in karma. They both believe in reincarnation and they both generally practice vegetarianism, something like that. I, I personally advocate for something called the rule of three. You're usually going to be asked for similarities, differences, uh, causes, effects. That's more than one. Well, technically, in that example, you could have said reincarnation and karma. That's fine. But let's say you said reincarnation and a belief in Jesus Christ. Well, now you only have one thing that's correct. So you only really have one similarity, which means you don't get that thesis point. You build in three things to kind of base your essay around. And it can be broader than that, but three things. You give yourself a little wiggle room just in case you mess up. For me, I think the thesis works best at the end of the introduction because the other thing that needs to be in the introduction, and this has to be in the introduction, is contextualization. Just building context. Again, this is just background information. That's all it is. You're telling me about the time period. You're telling me who's around. You're telling me some of the main things going on at that time. I think I told you guys before when we talked about context and document analysis, it's the same basic thing. But like my wife's been watching Lucifer on Netflix and, and she kind of gets ahead of me sometimes because I'll be doing something else. And I'll come back and I'm like, ah, why'd you, why, why'd you keep watching? I don't know what's going on. It's OK, though, because the next episode always starts off with last week on Lucifer or previously on Lucifer. And they kind of fill me in. They let me know what's been going on. Well, you're doing the same thing in your essay. You got to assume if this essay is about the period 1200 to 1450 or the religions one, it was about 600 BC to 600 CE. You got to assume that I don't know anything about that time period. So you're transporting me there. You're letting me know a little bit about the world the region, whatever, at that time. It could have been like, you know, from 600 BC to 600 CE, classical civilizations like Greece and Rome and the Han Dynasty, you know, they, they built these expansive trade networks. This is also the time period in which multiple new religions rose up, such as Christianity and, uh, you know, whatever, okay, uh, Buddhism. If you could then segue to your thesis, you've given me enough for context. You've at least told me what time period you're in, who's around, and some of the key things going on because again general rule of thumb in writing you've got to assume i know nothing about history you gotta you gotta explain it to me you gotta teach it to me so first paragraph you can get two points out of your first paragraph and guys on my rubric that's a passing score so if you run out of time if you had a really good first paragraph you, you're passing at least and that's what i mean you gotta cater to the rubric it is very formulaic it's not that hard to get a passing grade on it's difficult to get an A, but it's not hard to get a passing grade if you put forth effort. The next part is evidence. OK, this is just like the SAQ. Be specific. On the SAQ, we say the ACE format, you know, that first sentence, you know, you're introducing usually a term, a name, something specific. That's what evidence is. Specific academic vocabulary, specific specific events, specific inventions, historical developments. Thing is, though, you can't just name drop. I'd maybe write that. Don't just name drop. If you're writing about Buddhism and you said, and then there's Siddhartha Gautama, and then you just kept rolling without explaining who Siddhartha Gautama was, well, that's not evidence. You just threw out a name. How do I know who he is? If you then explained he is uh, a Hindu prince who tried to end suffering and eventually became known as the Buddha. Well, now you've told me who he is and how he fits into your argument. That's the sort of stuff we need. Specific people, specific names, terms, vocabulary. That's evidence. 
for one point, you may want to write this down. I need four pieces in your in your whole essay, just four things that are specific that make sense to be there. If you start writing about, I don't know, Christopher Columbus, when you're when you're comparing Buddhism and Hinduism, and you tell me all about him. Well, that's great, but he doesn't have anything to do with what you're writing about, so you don't get that. But you tell me somebody likes Siddhartha, and you, you build on it, that's a piece of evidence. So four pieces of evidence, I'll give you one point. Six pieces of evidence, I will give you two points. But make sure it connects to what you're writing about. Make sure that the use of this evidence supports your argument, that it makes sense for you to be writing about within the topic of your essay. And if you know more than six, put more than six. It's okay. If something's wrong, I can look past that. The last point category is analysis and reasoning. This first point is super easy to get. Do you have a cohesive argument? Can I look and see what point you're trying to prove? Essentially, does what you write in your essay actually connect to your thesis? If you establish a, a line of reasoning, and guys, there's these historical thinking skills that usually you're gonna be utilizing. Comparison, causation, continuity and change over time. If I can kind of tell, hey, he is making comparisons there. Hey, he is talking about the effects of something here. You should get that point every time. It's an easy one. It's not a freebie because I've seen some people go off the rails and write about just whatever they felt like. Uh, but if you are on topic and I see a good effort there and, and there's an argument, you should be okay. The second point, however, it's the weird one, okay? We usually nickname it, and I can't highlight on this for some reason because it's PDF. We call it the unicorn point. Okay, in that we've all heard of unicorns. We really don't see unicorns. This is the college board being evil. They give you this point category that statistically they very rarely are willing to give. Uh, I graded, God, I don't know, something like a thousand DBQ essays this last year. Say maybe five, I wouldn't even say five percent. I'd say maybe 20 or 25 kids of those I gave this point to. And part of it's because the College Board leaves it very vague and they make it very difficult to actually get this point. Key thing here, and they give all these different examples like, oh, they can explain a nuance of an issue by analyzing multiple variables. They know you don't know what that means because it could, you could take that in so many different ways. They, they purposely have left this vague. For me, show me complex understanding. Okay, that's the key. You know your stuff. You know more than you got to know about your stuff. You're bringing up stuff that I'm like, oh my God, is that true? Oh, it is because they really know their stuff. Now over here, they give you some ways to do this and, and you can read through this. You can try for all of them if you want. The easiest thing though is the second bullet, explaining both similarity and difference, explaining both continuity and change, explaining both multiple causes and, and explaining causes and effects. So if you get an essay that's over the causes of the fall of classical empires, that's great. You give me a well-crafted essay over those causes, then at some point, hey, now that I've just you know already explored this use, issue, I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm also going to give you some of the effects, and I'm going to be specific. Give me enough specific detail. You give me more evidence that's needed. You just show a really well-written essay. I'll give it to you. Okay? I, I'm probably a little bit easier to get it with than you will on the actual AP exam, uh, but still it is something that you could feasibly get. Always try for it. I mean, it doesn't hurt. If nothing else, you know, it's just going to enrich your essay in general. So that's the college board rubric, but it's like, what does a six mean? You know, well, let's talk about it. Uh, now we need to look at the grading rubric, the, the AP scoring rubric. There it is. So I've tweaked this a little bit since last time. It's, it's still pretty darn easy to pass. I've made it a little bit more difficult, though, to get like an A. So same categories, just abbreviated. If you get all six points, you get 100. Fantastic. You get all five points, I'm going to give you a 95 because that is awesome. From there, though, you do see a 10-point drop. You get a four, that's a solid essay. I'm only going to give you an 85. You get a three, you get an 80. Three of those points isn't that hard to get. You get a two. That's pretty darn easy. I will give you a 75. You get a one. Well, 
not very difficult to get a one. I mean, you could get a one or a two just by a good, by one paragraph, by a good uh, introduction. Uh, so for me, a one is a 70 because you at least got something you pass. If you give me an essay that doggone it, I can tell you tried, you put forth some effort, you were at least writing about the topic, but you just somehow didn't get any of these, I will give you a 60 with effort. Now, if it's a sentence, a sentence and a half, that's not effort, you're not getting a 60. I'll just try to figure out what that equates to. Uh, but if you show me some effort, you're going to get a 60. Um, if I see that there's no effort whatsoever, you might get a zero. You might get like a 25, maybe. I don't know. It just kind of depends. It's a case by case thing, but that's rare. Most people, if you put forth a little bit of effort, I'll give you a 60, which isn't great, but it's also something especially with the extra credit opportunities we have shouldn't kill anybody. This is going to be the LAQ rubric we lose use uh, from now on. Uh, the first one was kind of the introductory LAQ, a little bit easier. Um, we got to constantly make things a little bit more difficult on you. Last couple things, and then, man, we're going to wrap it up, and you guys will be able to kind of prepare for this thing however you want. Next one we have is sample essays. And this comes from the College Board website. I kind of showed you uh, earlier where this stuff was. Uh, we did one of these before, before our last LEQ. This is a different essay, but it's the exact same format. So from the 2009 LEQs, they gave you three choices you could have written about. Um, and, and honestly, and they're still going to do that. You need to write about which one you feel the best about, you know the most about. And the, the guys, the writing prompts always sound really complicated. They're not. The first part's just an introduction. The second part's your writing prompt. Uh, so it says, in the period 600 to 1450, trade networks expanded and economic productive capacity increased. Technological innovations and transfers often contributed to this process. Here's your actual writing prompt. Develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which technological innovations or transfers led to increased economic growth in this period. So when you see these prompts, at first you're going to be like, what is this crap? Every time, what, what, now what? But when you slow it down and really look at it, you know, and if you had a paper copy, I'd probably recommend like circling the dates and, and the main ideas. All it's saying is, you know, people are trading, you know, economies in some of these places are flourishing. How did technological innovation or cultural borrowing have to do with that? You know, how did new inventions, you know, how did maybe people like, you know, the Abbasid Caliphate learning stuff from the Chinese? How may that have impacted the economy? How may that have impacted trade? Pretty straightforward. It just takes a minute. And when you guys get these LEQs, you need to don't just start writing right away. Take five minutes to break down the, the prompt, jot down some ideas, and then start writing. Again, on this LEQ, you're going to have 60 minutes. Spend the first five, 10 minutes just kind of planning out what you're going to say, and then get to it. Um, from there in this little packet, they're going to give you examples to start off with. You don't know what a thesis would be good for this? Well, here's a good one. Um, da, 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 da. In the period 600 to 1450, the Abbasid Caliph's promotion of science and trade led economic growth by expanding mathematical and geographic knowledge, as well as by encouraging the development of new economic practices, such as the use of camels and caravans. That one's pretty good. This next one, eh, it's not very good, but, you know, they say it'll get the thesis point. I think you need maybe a little bit more, but but this one, you're kind of in that iffy territory. Trade in particular grew in the period because of the invention of tools. Oh, I see why. No, 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 this is a different one. Trade in particular grew in the period because of the invention of tools such as the compass. So that one's less great, and I'd prefer, you know, maybe a little bit more there. But again, based on the prompt, you could get away with that. A uh, good example of context, and they're going to do this for all the points, guys. Well, hey, hey now, a little too far. Uh, context. In Eurasia, the period of 600 to 1450 was one uh, of greatly increased connections between regions, caused in large part by the spread of religions such as Islam and Buddhism. To me, I would like a little bit more, but they're at least giving you the time period, they're telling you the geographic area, and they're talking about at least one of the main ideas that were going on. Again, context, guys, is just background information. I'm going to leave it to you to look through the rest of it if you so choose, but just know this is a really good resource. So in this resource, scoring guidelines, they get into a lot of detail. So if you're confused on what a piece of evidence would look like or, or whatever, you go through. But then they have some actual student essays. 
in my way of thinking, if you can learn to start reading these essays and, and kind of practice grading them, if you can start doing it accurately, you can write these essays yourself. Because once you recognize what a good thesis is, what context is, what it looks like, guys, you can recreate that. You can do it yourself. This essay got all the points. And it did a really good job of, in the introduction, getting both its context and its thesis. So let's look at how this flows. And guys, what do you know? It's the same time period that, that we're dealing with in our essay. A little bit broader maybe, but still same roundabout time period. From 600 to 1400 CE, this period began with the fall of classical civilizations such as Rome, Han China, and the Gupta dynasty. Boom, you've identified the time period and told me some of the people that were around, at least at the beginning. While these main civilizations collapsed, the trade networks between them for the most part stayed. While some exchanges would not be invigorated until after this time period, as manorialism led to much of Western Europe being isolated from Afro-Eurasian trade. We talked about that last week. New technological innovations and transfers would lead uh, or led to increased trade and stimulate economic growth. All that thus far is really just context. You've talked about the people around. You've talked about trade. You even gave me some specific reasons as to why Europe's not really involved. Your thesis statement's right here. In this post-classical period, the invention of DAOs, which we haven't talked about, but we will, uh, with Latin sales, so that's technology, and the, prolifer the proliferation of banking and credit systems caused economic growth uh, across Eurasia uh, with the rise of Mansa Musa as a notable effect of this economic growth. So he's doing his causes, but then he even gives an effect because he's kind of setting up that complex understanding less, later on. It's specific. And it serves as the backbone for the rest of his essay because the rest of his essay is just getting into these things in more detail. Again, there's three essays. The other ones aren't as good, but when you get a chance, read through this stuff. It'll tell you the scores at the end. It'll explain why the scores were what they were. Again, you got to do a little research, but this could be helpful. The last thing I'm going to show you, and eh, you may have enough time to get through it today, uh, is the AMSCO Unit 1. This is the last time we're going to open up Unit 1, at least, you know, until we start reviewing. This is the section of the textbook, the, the big unit of the textbook we've been working on for forever. The last chapter, and it's only like four pages, so it's not much. You could read it in 10 minutes. It is comparison, because comparison is still going to be the skill we're going to be using in the essay. Come on now. Where are you? Takes a while should be next. Sorry, I'm slow. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's right here somewhere, maybe. Okay, 1.7. I'd maybe write that down. Chapter 1.7. Highly, highly, highly recommend you read this before you start writing the essay. Uh, if you want to take notes, that's fine. I'm not going to check for them, but it's there. Guys, you're writing a comparison essay. You're going to be comparing something, probably the different groups of people we've talked about, in some specific way, shape, or form. That's what this chapter is doing. So you could get a lot of writing points, talking points, you know, out of just this chapter. It's only four pages. And they break it down between state building, new empires, kind of how they organize their states. They talk about the role of religion in state building. That's, that's a big theme we've talked about. They talk about state building through trade, another big theme we've talked about. They talk about the impact of nomadic peoples, which we haven't talked about that much. We talked about the Turks a little bit. We'll talk about the Mongols next week. Uh, and then, you know, patriarchy and religion. It even gives you like a little chart there at the end. If you read this and read it carefully, you can probably figure out more or less what the writing prompt is. So I would use this as kind of your kickoff point. Read through the information. Uh, and then when you're ready, man. Get to that essay. It's not open yet, but it will be open before the end of the day or before I leave today. You got tonight, you got tomorrow, you got Wednesday, up until midnight to get this thing done. It is a test grade. It does need to be on time. But if you can finish it early, guys, knock it out. And again, if you had an awesome introduction and didn't write anything else, you could get an A. Now, I wouldn't do that because what if you think your introduction is awesome and I think it's not? Well, then you don't have an A, but still, uh, it's just something to think about. So if you want, 
maybe you just glance over those pages. I think it would be a good use of your time. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to you, though. Uh, again, that's kind of the gist of it. Do we have any questions on, on essay writing at this point? Okay. If you come up with any, let me know. Um, don't wait till 9.45 tonight and you're starting to write the essay and then you got a question. Well, now you're already in it and the timer started, so that's probably a little too late. Um, but, you know, if you kind of need a little review, Heimler does have a video I've got embedded under today's date uh, that, you know, he's going to explain the whole essay writing a little bit different than I do. But again, it's there uh, and I didn't connect it, but he also has videos specifically like over how to do a thesis, how to establish context. Uh, so, again, that's something to really consider. Other than that, we got about eight minutes. We got enough time to, to give it a good once over, but if you don't want to, if you just want to pack up, that is fine. I'm going to be coming around here the last two minutes or so to spray down your desks. 